In this video, I want to look at the less than relation of the set of real numbers and the order axioms that the less than relation happens to satisfy. To get started, I want to be thinking in terms of representing the set of real numbers by the points on a straight line. It is usual to draw the number line as a horizontal line, but it doesn't get turned into a number line until we actually labeled one point as a zero and one point as a one. This establishes a scale for the number line, and once we have a scale for the number line, every point on this number line, wherever it happens to be, corresponds to a unique decimal expansion. And so each point on the number line corresponds to exactly one real number. And so this is a way of visualizing what the real numbers look like. It turns out that there is actually a compass and straight edge construction for taking points on a real number line and figuring out where their sum and their product is. Fortunately, we do not need to do that in this particular course. But once we have the number line established, talking about less than is really, really easy. So let's draw another number line. Now, in this particular case, I don't care where the 0 is, and I don't care where the 1 is. So I'm simply going to write down, here is the real number A, and here is the real number B. And when A and B are like this, we are going to write A is less than B. So A is less than B means the position of A is to the left of the position of B on the number line. And it's also important to realize that A is less than B can also be written as B is bigger than A. So we interchange either A is less than B or B is bigger than A, depending upon the context. There's one more piece of notation that I want to establish, which is already quite familiar to you. A is less than B is logically the same as the compound statement A is less than B, or A and B are the same number. And in the same uh, and in the same way, we say B is bigger than or equal to A if and only if B is bigger than A or B and A are exactly the same thing. This notation is not new to you. The next thing that I want to look at, however, are a formal statement of the order axioms that the less than relationship satisfies. So uh, what do they say? Well, here is the list of them. I would suggest that you stop the video, copy them down in your notes, and once you've got them copied down, restart the video and we can discuss them. So hopefully you've done that. The first thing that I want to notice is that the first order axiom is that if A is less than B and B is less than C, then A is less than C. This is frequently called the transitive property of less than. And it's easy enough to see why that one is obviously true if I draw a number line and we look at A is here and it's less than B and B is less than C so that makes C out here and since A is here and I have to go that way to get to C, A is clearly less than C. So this is order axiom number one. Order axiom number two is often called the law of trichotomy. We have, if A and B are distinct, 
Either A is less than B or B is less than A, but not both. And I want to kind of think about what does that axiom say in terms of the geometry. So here is my number line. And we have an A here. And then basically one of three things happens. A is equal to B or B is out here, and in this case, A is less than B, or B is down here, in which case, B is less than A. Now, the law of trichotomy also has one more uh, way of, of being phrased, and it's important to think about that as well. If I make that A equal to zero, then what we have is either b is equal to zero, b is bigger than zero, so b is positive, or b is down here, and b is less than zero, so b is negative. So another way of stating the law of trichotomy is that uh, every real number is either positive, negative, or equal to zero, but it is only one of those three things. The third axiom basically says that if I have an inequality, I can add the same number to both sides of that inequality. This is something that you should be familiar with from high school. The fourth axiom says that if we're going to multiply an inequality by a number, we need to know whether or not the number we're multiplying by is positive or negative. If the number we're multiplying is positive, then the inequality stays the same. If the, multipli if the multiplier is negative, the inequality gets flipped. The fifth order axiom is that, there's, that no matter what real number we have, there is some integer named n such that a winds up being trapped between n and n plus 1. This one here is usually given the name the Archimedean principle. Because Archimedes is the first one who described Axiom 5. And this is actually a slight variation on the way Archimedes described it. But I do want to look at um, the Archimedean principle axiom in terms of the geometry. So let's see. Order axiom number five, the Archimedean principle. So if I have a number line and I have A is somewhere here, then what the Archimedean principle says is that there exists an integer n such that A is trapped between n and n plus 1. Or, let's draw one more number line. If A is an integer itself, then what we have is A is equal to an integer and n plus 1 is here. And in this case, A still satisfies this particular inequality. If A is strictly, tri strictly trapped, we get that particular inequality. And so what this basically says is that no matter what real number you've got, it's trapped between two integers if it's not an integer. 